Hello and welcome to Worship Online with Upper Clyde Parish Church. It's great that you can join us for this time of worship. So whether gathered or scattered, we are still all one in Jesus, who calls us here to be his people and to follow him. And following is one of the themes, the major theme of our service this morning. Last week, if you were uh, watching worship, we were following Jesus and his disciples as they crossed the Sea of Galilee and entered into the territory of the Gerasenes. This week, Jesus and the disciples continue their travels and they're now in the territory of the Samaritans, where some are curious about Jesus and wonder about following him. But before they do so, there are some things that they need to just go and do. So we're talking about following, we're talking about focusing, and we'll talk about not looking back, but looking forward. Before we move more fully into our time of worship, just one, one wee thing. It's great to have Angela, our community worker, back working with us, and she will be involved in our time of worship today, so she will be doing our readings for us. As far as I'm aware, there aren't any other notices this week, which is quite amazing. So I'm wondering what I've forgotten. Never mind. But as we move into worship, let's take a wee moment to be still, just to let go of the busyness that uh, has gone before us already, just to still ourselves and to prepare our minds and hearts, our whole selves, to meet with God in worship. Let's be still. Our call to worship. The time is now, the Lord is here. He calls us in this moment. And so we gather in the power of the Spirit, rejoicing in the fullness of his love. Let us worship God, and our opening hymn of praise is, Ye servants of God, your master proclaim. Let us pray. Eternal God, whose promises ring true through scripture and which burn brightly still today, we praise you for that thread through history that gives us comfort and certainty that you are indeed our living, loving, caring God. We praise you that what you promise you deliver, when you commit, you do not falter. We praise you that in Jesus, we see your love in action, loving others with such a depth of love and commitment. We praise you that in the early followers of Jesus, we see discipleship that gives us encouragement and hope. 
that they didn't always succeed first time, and yet you had patience with them and faith in them. We praise you for your patience with us, for your determination to lead us, and for your love for us. You call us, Almighty God, to follow you, to commit ourselves to you. You are there before us, calling us, drawing us, leading us, guiding us. We follow in awe and delight and trepidation, all rolled into one. You are a mighty God and we come before you in this place and at this time. So send your spirit, may it move and burn within us, deepening our commitment to you. And yet, Lord, even as you call us to follow you through thick and thin, even as you call us to love you and to love our neighbour as ourselves, we know that too often we falter and fall, too often we lose our focus, our attention wanders from you. We know that we set out with good intentions, but there are times when we turn back and look the other way. We mean to be committed when we make our promises, but we confess we too often fall by the wayside. Forgive us and thank you that you keep on calling us, that you are ever patient with us, that you always offer us the opportunity of a fresh start. We thank you that with you each day is a new beginning, a new chance to reconnect and to recommit, to set our face towards you and to follow in your way. Be our vision, we pray. In Jesus' name, who taught his friends when praying to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Psalm 77, verses 1 to 2, and then 11 to 20. I cry aloud to God, aloud to God that he may hear me. In the day of my trouble I seek the Lord. In the night my hand is stretched out without wearying. My soul refuses to be comforted. I will call to mind the deeds of the Lord. I will remember your wonders of old. I will meditate on all your work and muse on your mighty deeds. Your way, O God, is holy. What God is so great as our God? You are the God who works wonders. 
you have displayed your might among the peoples. With your strong arm you redeemed your people, the descendants of Jacob and Joseph. When the waters saw you, O God, when the waters saw you, they were afraid. The very deep trembled. The clouds poured out water, the skies thundered, your arrows flashed on every side. The crash of your thunder was in the whirlwind. Your lightnings lit up the world. The earth trembled and shook. Your way was through the sea, your path through the mighty waters. Yet your footprints were unseen. You led your people like a flock by the hand of Moses and Aaron. Luke chapter 9 verses 51 to 62 When the days drew near for him to be taken up, he set his face to go to Jerusalem. And he sent messengers ahead of him. On their way, they entered a village of the Samaritans to make ready for him. But they did not receive him, because his face was set towards Jerusalem. When his disciples James and John saw it, they said, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them? But he turned and rebuked them. Then they went on to another village. As they were going along the road, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes, and birds of the air have nests. But the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. To another he said, Follow me. But he said, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. But Jesus said to him, Let the dead bury their own dead. But as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Another said, I will follow you, Lord, but let me first say farewell to those at my home. Jesus said to him, No one who puts a hand to the plough and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. Amen.
Let's pray. To the one who calls us to follow, so we pray. Amen. Friday was the last day of the school year in our five primary schools in the parish and it got me to thinking about childhood. In fact, I went on a little bit of a nostalgia trip back to oh, years long ago and I remember, I remember that it was always sunny. The sky was always bluer than blue and the summer holidays seemed to stretch on forever. There were always friends and games and fun and laughter. The sweet shop man would wait patiently while I'd choose my seven sweets for a cent. And, and I swear that ice cream sundaes were, were bigger than the Sydney Harbour Bridge. The world seemed a kinder, friendlier place where everybody knew your name and looked out for one another. It was a time of innocence, of no responsibility of exploration and wonder, idyllic almost. And while memories and experiences may differ, for many people looking back to their childhood years later, there's, a, there's often a wee pang of yearning, wishing, wishing we could go back to what seemed a simpler time, a time often referred to as the good old days. Actually, there's a whole movement built around looking back, usually, usually with the word vintage attached to it, whether it's to do with cars or clothing or cameras or, or whatever. Looking back can be good, but it's not always helpful because when viewed with less than rosy tinted glasses, for all that the past may have seemed so good, so much simpler, the reality is that it was probably just as messy and difficult and confusing as it is now. As the old saying goes, nostalgia ain't what it used to be. And sometimes, sometimes holding on too tightly to the past, always looking back rather than being in the present and looking ahead, can, can end up making us feel as if we're stuck in a mire of what-ifs and if-onlys. Constantly looking back for all the warm memories brings with it regrets for roads not taken, choices not made. It can bring a strange kind of paralysis of analysis as the film reel of your earlier life is endlessly rerun and poured over in your mind's eye. Always looking back results in only seeing what has been and not what might be. Sacrificing the now and not yet to what can never be regained. The kind of looking back which keeps you bogged down by the past and results in you closing yourself off to possibilities that might very well bring about huge life-altering changes for the better. And it's this closing yourself off to possibilities, the not fully living in the moment or looking ahead, that we find in our Gospel reading for today. Now, I'll admit there's some hard stuff in this passage. Some of Jesus' responses to those who reply to his call to follow seem harsh. This is no soft and fluffy Jesus. And some biblical scholars are so taken aback at his responses that they wonder if these are actually words he said. So what's happening here in this gospel passage? Last week's passage saw Jesus and his followers crossing boundaries, moving from the Jewish uh, territory to Gentile territory, to the land of the Gerasenes. And in our gospel reading for today, Jesus and his friends are now traveling through Samaritan territory. And remember, Samaritans and Jews were generally hostile to one another. So in this sense, Jesus and his followers are still moving beyond the boundaries, both culturally and geographically, as they were last week. And again, as last week, they're not made welcome. For all of the customs of, uh, that are around hospitality at that time, there's no place for them to lay their heads. 
Foxes, poles, and birds have nests, says Jesus, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. There's a cost to falling in with God and following his plans. It's not always a guarantee of an easy life. And sometimes, like the man who had been healed in the territory of the Gerasenes, there's a call to stay and to do the work of the kingdom right where you are. And in our passage today, there's a reminder that sometimes, sometimes the call to follow involves a physical uprooting and moving in order to do the work of the kingdom. There's also a wee reminder that the work of the kingdom is centred on love. So James and John going to Jesus and saying of those who didn't offer a welcome, hey Jesus, let's smite them is pretty much not the way of the kingdom. Though I don't know about you, but sometimes it's so um, it's very tempting to at least think that thought when people you know aren't behaving very well. As we know, Jesus and his followers move on, and there are those who are interested in him and his message, and they respond to him, I'll follow you, but... And they present some very compelling reasons to delay. There's, there's the reminder of discomfort, the discomfort of following, uh, the very practical context of following someone whose ministry is one that involves moving from place to place. You might not necessarily find a bed for the night. There's the hard response to the one whose father has died. Let the dead bury the dead. Or the response to the one who first wants to say goodbye to their family. No one who puts a hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. It's tough stuff. And it's a comment on the wrong kind of looking back, the type that so entangles you that you can't follow, that you can't move ahead, the type of looking back that keeps you stuck in the past in this endless loop cycle. Now, twice in our passage, we hear how Jesus has set his face towards Jerusalem. He has a fair idea of what lies ahead for him. And now there's no going back. Playing out over the backdrop of the task that's before him, the response from Jesus to those saying, I'll follow you, but takes in a much bigger and, and more immediate context. There's a, there's a sense here that There'll always, there'll always be something that comes up that will cause those who want to follow Jesus to look back, to lose focus, to become stuck. So how do you follow Jesus and focus on the work of the kingdom when so many things compete for your attention? Let's look at the psalm for a moment. Our psalmist, in the midst of distress, calls out to God very much living in the present moment with all its particular difficulties, here we find someone who looks back to the past. But here, rather than an unhealthy obsession with the past and a desire to escape, to, to run away and hide there, what the psalmist does is to use those memories to move forward. There are recollections of what God has done for his people in the past. And from this comes the reminder of God's nature. What God is so great as our God. Boom. And there's your focus and you're centered. So in this case, looking back leads to looking forward. This is the kind of looking back that helps you to become unstuck because it brings the focus back not on the past alone, but of the God of the past, who is also the God of the present and the future, the God of all time and eternity. The world in the time of the psalmist was probably in parts just as messy and difficult and confusing as it is now. Within our all too human context and our understanding of power dynamics, there will always be those in positions of power who are corrupt, dishonest, greedy. Always those who are all too ready to deny basic human rights to others. 
thinking here of the news this week that the UK is looking at walking away from holding to the European Council for Human Rights Bill. There'll always be those seen only as cogs in the wheel for others' profits, always those having to fight for the right to fair pay and safe working conditions. There'll always be people who will fall through the cracks through no fault of their own, whose, whose opportunities to flourish and live full lives will be stamped on by the system. And there'll always be those who try to control the narrative, to tell a story with a particular slant in such a way as to praise the ones who deny others while blaming the victims. Even so, as those who do our best to follow Jesus and who work for the inbringing of God's kingdom of heaven here on earth, Setting our face towards God's kingdom is enshrined in the very prayer that Jesus taught us, which we say every week, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Look, we don't always get it right. We often prefer comfort, the comfort of familiarity. And if we take nothing else from our gospel reading today, it's really this, just don't get stuck. Refocus, move forward and open yourselves to see the possibilities of a kingdom that sets the baseline for an expectation of how people should be treated and, and sets out what's important for life, both for survival and beyond mere existing. A model for a better way of living. God's kingdom of heaven on earth to which we are called to participate in and to bring forth. So may it be so. Amen. Some quiet space now for personal reflection as we listen to a piece of music called Open My Heart.
let us pray. Generous God, in our lives and in our choices, we strive to follow you. We come before you in thanks for all you have given and for your constant presence in our lives. With gratitude, we make our offerings laid here and by other means in the hope that it'll be used for your good and for your sake. Accept, O oh Lord, our thanks and praise for all that you have done for us. We thank you for the splendour of the whole creation, for the beauty of this world, for the wonder of life and for the mystery of love. We thank you for the blessing of family and friends and for the loving care which surrounds us on every side. We thank you for setting us at tasks which demand our best efforts and for leading us to accomplishments which satisfy and delight us. We thank you also for those disappointments and failures that lead us to acknowledge our dependence on you alone. Above all, we thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, for the truth of his word and the example of his life, for his steadfast obedience by which he overcame temptation, for his dying through which he overcame death, and for his rising to life again, in which we are raised to the life of your kingdom. Grant us the gift of your Spirit, that we may know him and make him known, and through him at all times and in all places may give thanks to you in all things. Loving God, in this week's Gospel reading, we see Jesus responding to the situation he found himself with calm. This week we have seen tension around the rail strike as people react to this situation and with potential for other pay disputes we ask for calm and fair negotiations and so we pray for those who mediate disputes and look to resolve them may they listen carefully and speak with wisdom we pray for patience consideration and kindness in talks and ask that all involved find a resolution that works we also pray for those who are anxious about the cost of living. Help all who are struggling and worried about what the future holds. Loving God, in this week's reading, when Jesus arrived in a village, he was not given a welcome. We live in a world full of displaced people, many of whom experience what it's like to be unwelcome. As reporting from places like Syria and Yemen moves down the news agenda, we know that you see everyone who's been forced to leave their home, everyone who has fled in terror, and everyone whose future is highly uncertain. Remind us to keep praying for people even when they no longer occupy the headlines. Thank you for the people who work diligently with refugees for those who advocate for others and who speak for people who have no voice. Loving God, in this week's reading, we see that the call of Jesus requires us to pay wholehearted attention to the work of the kingdom. As we move through our week and around our neighbourhood, help us to notice signs of the kingdom of God. And we also pray for your kingdom to come here on earth. We pray for places that are suffering real unrest. We pray for Ukraine. We pray for miners in the Central African Republic under attack by mercenaries. We pray for people in India suffering flooding after monsoons. We pray for Afghanistan now suffering the after effects of an earthquake. We pray for people close to us finding life hard at the moment, loving Father, bring your kingdom closer. Loving God, this week's reading shows us that we need to decide to follow Jesus. There's so much competition for our time and attention, social media, different streaming platforms, the 24 hour news cycle. With all that we juggle each week, help us to make space for Jesus. Help us to prioritize our relationship with you O oh God, and to make time to learn more and to grow in prayer. And we pray for our church. We pray that we would help each other in our journeys of faith. 
and in a time of quiet prayer we bring before you all who are on our minds and in our hearts at this time and pray for our own particular needs. give you thanks that you hear our prayers and we offer them up in Jesus name. Amen. Our closing hymn is Forth in Thy Name, O Lord I Go. We close our time of worship with a blessing. From here to eternity, from pew, in homes, on our street corners, from young and old, God's word is shared. So may we never give up when the going gets tough. May we remain ever hopeful, ever loving, ever ready to serve our God, who sends us now in his name. And as we go, May the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you all evermore. Amen. As you go out into this week with whatever you're doing, whoever you're meeting up with, 
May you know God's joy. May you know God's love. May you know God's peace and presence with you. So in the meantime, until next time, take care. God bless and goodbye for now.